Hello everyone, this is Alex with Kodiak Woodcraft. In today's video, we're going to be building LED lamps, just like these. Now, these are actually intended to go in the corner, so I'll give you a couple examples of what that looks like. As you can see, you can get some really nice moody lighting out of these, and it's totally a project you can build yourself. The nice thing about building these out of wood is that it's very cost-effective, simple, and flexible. You can make these any size you like and use any brand of LED tape that you prefer. I chose to go with a bit of a more subtle approach, but there are LED brands that have wild animations and music synchronization and all sorts of other crazy stuff. You've definitely got a lot of options, and if you do have any questions about LED tape, feel free to ask in the comments. Anyway, so that's what we'll be building today. Before we get into it, I only have one request. If you enjoy the video, I just ask that you go ahead and like it. It really does help with my channel. All right, that's enough of an intro. Let's build this thing. All right, so I kicked off this project by ripping down these long strips of pine, which are going to serve as the mounting material for the LED tape. They're ultimately going to be squared up and even on each side, but at this point I'm just roughing them out. This seems like a good time to address the overarching challenge of this entire design. I'm not sure that I can think of a project that will better expose the tendency of wood to warp and twist. I was careful to pick boards that had been acclimated to my house for a while, and I just picked the straightest ones I had. Even so, this is the biggest trade-off to building these out of wood. Anyway, I was making a couple of these stands at the same time, and I was able to get two strips out of each of my boards. After the first cut, I adjusted the saw and then ripped them all again to get them reasonably close to square. I then took to the thickness planer and fed all the boards through a couple of times, rotating them with each pass to make sure that they were trimmed evenly. Basically, this was just an extra step to make sure that they were 100% perfectly squared up, even on each side and at my exact preferred thickness. I picked that final thickness based on the dimensions that I was going for with the legs. You'll see what I mean as you watch further. I also wanted to make sure that I didn't make the stands too thin. Even though they may have looked nice, the risk of warping would have just increased significantly. I will say this, if you don't have a planer, this whole step isn't all that necessary. You can probably do a great job scoring up your material on the table saw. Or, you could just go out and buy a nice straight piece of stock that's already milled to square. One other note, I do get a bit of snipe on this planer, but I didn't bother trying too hard to minimize it. I had to cut these strips down to their final length anyway, and I could cut off the two or three inches of snipe on each end when I made that cut. That was my next step. I figured out how tall I wanted these stands to be based on my particular LED strips, as well as the room that I'd be putting the stands in. I then measured and cut down the strips to the exact height I wanted. I knew straight away that I didn't want to cut my LED tape or limit future reuse at all, so I built my stands to the same length as the tape itself. The final step with these strips was to route a very shallow groove into the back side of each one. I wanted the LED strips to sit in a channel so that it would be easy to keep them wrangled up and straight. This is another optional step, and if you do choose to do it, you don't necessarily need to use a routing table either. You could do something similar with the table saw, taking very shallow cuts and adjusting the fence a few times to get to the final width you'd like. Also, if you feed your board in each direction using a fence, you don't really need to measure for center. Your channel will end up being centered on its own. The one thing to watch for here is the width of the channel, I made mine just a little bit wider than the LED tape I plan to use. You'll get a good look at the result of this step in just a moment when I attach the tape. After this step was done, the vertical strips were complete, so I moved on to the legs. I chose to attach these legs with 45 degree miters for two reasons. First, it made for a clean look that would sit fairly deep in the corner of a room, and second, because the 45 degree angles actually allow for some built-in adjustability of the upper strip itself. I don't know about you, but I don't think that I have a perfectly 90 degree corner in my house. Having some adjustability in the legs would allow me to tweak the stands to any corner of any particular room. Of course, the downside of this design is it's not the strongest method of joinery, 
especially if you consider the leverage that that long strip can potentially create. I was willing to make the trade off, but if you're not, you can use a different way of attaching the legs. After I cut my legs to length, I also went ahead and tapered them just to get a bit of a cleaner, polished look. This jig I'm using is pretty awesome, but it's also very extra. If you don't have any kind of taper jig and you're looking to do something like this, you can easily build one with a couple pieces of plywood and a miter rail. You just want a way to secure the boards consistently on some sort of sled so that all of your tapers turn out the same. The final step to finishing up these legs was to pre-drill some holes in them for attaching to the long strips. I wanted to use three screws for each, so I was careful to mark out where I wanted them to go and made sure that the marks were offset by a small amount on opposing legs. That way the screws wouldn't run into one another when both legs were attached. I used a couple pieces of scrap wood and some clamps to form a 45 degree base on my drill press table, and then just went ahead and made all those pre-drill holes. First drilling straight through, and then coming back with a Forstner bit for a countersink. All right, so at this point I had finished preparing the parts for the project, and it was almost time to start putting it all together. This is the point in the build where I went ahead and did a stage of priming. I primed all the pieces individually and let them dry before moving on. I didn't get a ton of video here, and I'm not sure that you'd find it all that exciting anyway, so we'll jump forward here. After that primer coat had dried, I went ahead and screwed the legs in place. Even though I had already pre-drilled the leg pieces, I made sure to do the same into the actual strip, just to make absolutely sure that I wasn't going to crack anything. This design is a little bit awkward to screw together, because the pieces meet at an angle, but overall I was able to get it done without too much of a hassle. Just know that if you do attach the legs like this, the slightest degree of rotation in the leg is going to have a pretty big effect on how straight the whole thing stands. I had a square that I used to make sure that I was locking in these legs as close as possible to 90 degrees. After assembly, I set up for painting and did one coat of white paint. I used the same trim paint that I use everywhere in my house and it ended up looking really fresh. Again, I don't have much to say when it comes to painting these, so we'll just move along. After painting, there were a few more steps to go, and they all centered around attaching the LED strips themselves. Even though my strips came with some sort of stick-on backing, I wasn't all that excited about using it. I wanted to be able to reuse the strips in the future and wasn't thrilled about taking that one life out of the built-in tape. What I did instead was attach a strip of double-sided tape to the inside of my routed channel, which I had cut to the perfect width to fit. I peeled that top layer off and then just stuck my LED lights, backing tape and all, onto that new double-sided tape. I'd say this worked out pretty well. It hasn't been all that long, but the tape is holding strong. If it does fail in the future, I'll probably just pick up some mounting clips or sacrifice the built-in glue strip on the lights themselves. The last thing I'll mention here is that I did use a piece of electrical tape just to keep the very bottom of the strip from peeling up and loosening the whole thing. All right, so that's the build. Like I said in the beginning, this is a simple one that you can basically adjust to whatever tools you have at your disposal. I wasn't sure that I'd actually like how these turned out, especially early in the build, but I really do think they came together nicely. Please make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching.